Hello, and welcome to another exciting edition of the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. I am your host, Davo. With me, as always, we have Kells. Good evening. We have Andy. Play that funky music, white boy. We have, fresh from Mozambique, Allison. Howdy ho! And the sensei, Neil. Hello, everybody. So, Neil, what are we doing? Well, we're going to play some trivia. And as usual, each week we have a theme, and we have six categories in that theme, and each category has four questions worth 10 points each. Maybe a few bonuses thrown in here and there. And then a final question, which is up, which is worth up to 100 points. And today's theme is something I don't know, because today we're going to be asked questions by Allison. Ooh. That's right. So um, I wrote this a couple weeks back, and some of our listeners might not be listening to this in the current time that uh, we are making it, but... Um, there has been a lot of racial tension, to say the least, in our country. And um, so I'm actually really happy that we're going to do this category today. Um, this one is centered around black history. Oh. Uh-huh. Nice. All right. Very good. <laughs> I, uh... There's ten- tentative enthusiasm, I think. I like history. Right. I like history. <laughs> I am so afraid of exposing all the ignorance that I have at this point that... <laughs> We'll see what happens. Hey, let it be. Yeah. It's all about learning. I Yeah, I will learn. So, in true Neil fashion, category one is science. Yay. Yay. Of course it is. <laughs> all right, question one. What famous scientist has over 13 million followers on Twitter? And got his big start as the director of the Hayden Planetarium, and then later become became an official advisor advisor to President George W. Bush. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Okay, let's start with Neil. Tyson. And Andy. Tyson. And Davo. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Ooh, and Kells. Neil deGrasse Tyson. All righty. Yep. See, I'm getting better at this. I was, last time I made uh, one for the Patreon, my first question was way too hard. And this time I was like, <laughs> throw him a softball first. So we can line up the so, pitch. Has anybody tried to listen to his podcast? No. Uh-huh. I tried once. I, I, it's not good. I res- <laughs> oh, Andy. I respect the guy, but. I don't know. I, I tried. We tried watching the the new Cosmos that he did, and he just kind of comes across as kind of condescending to me a lot of the time. Yeah, I had the same. His, his podcast. I mean, I and, and and Neil and I both listened to the same science podcast, um, Skeptics Guide. But um, I thought I'd really like his. I was really set up to love his podcast, and I just uh, couldn't get into it. I, I gave it a few months. So Neil and Andy listen to the same science podcast, but Neil retains what he listens to. <laughs> <laughs> Neil is um, smart. Yeah. Um, hmm. I I listen to smart people sometimes. <laughs> All right. Question two. Made widely known in the movie Hidden Figures. What project did Catherine Goebel Johnson? And also, in a, in a smaller part, Dorothy Vaughn and Janelle Monet calculate flight trajectories for. Oh, so, do you need the, the mission name? Yes, please. A particular uh, mission name or a group of or? missions? Group, yeah. I believe. Okay. Yep, I think, okay. you're, I think you're right with the group thought. Got it. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Okay. Let's start with Davo. Uh, the Apollo missions. And Kells. I said Apollo. And uh, Andy. 
I'm really torn between Mercury and Apollo, but I'm pretty sure it's Apollo. And uh, Neil. So I don't know if I ever met, ever mentioned this on this show before, but my my dad used to work as a contractor at NASA in the uh, mid to late '60s, and um, he did some training for some of the um, lunar land the lunar lander for the Apollo missions. But he started there on the Mercury missions, and I believe the correct answer is Mercury. Well, uh, Andy, you should have gone with your thought. Neil is correct. It is yeah. Project Mercury. Yeah. And it's interesting, Andy, how you said it. you think it's either Mercury or Apollo, and you just skipped all of the Gemini missions in between. Because <laughs> I knew because I knew it was one of the big firsts. It was either the first first men in space, which was Mercury, or if it's the Apollo missions, which is is leading up to the moon. So I knew it wasn't Gemini, and I couldn't remember which firsts they were working on. You skipped Gemini. What a maroon! <laughs> <laughs> so one one way to one way to keep track of those is, uh, I mean, you all, you all know that the Apollo missions had three people, right? Crews of three. Mm-hmm. Gemini mm-hmm. had two. Because, you know, Gemini, the twins. And right. then the other one left was the Mercury, which were all single-manned vehicles. Well, I never looked at it that way. Wow. Brilliant. I mean, Neil. Neil. <laughs> and that's that's how you know the order, because they kept adding more people as time went on. Okay. So, question three. George Washington Carver is most well-known for his scientific work with peanuts. Mm-hmm. Um a crop he hoped would replace King Cotton. How many inventions slash uses did he invent using peanuts? You need to be within 50 for points. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's so many. Did he invent Reese's Pieces or Reese Peanut Butter Cups? Because if he did, he deserves a Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to give truck goes by my favorite uh eddie murphy quote meanwhile george washington carver is going crazy trying to drive trying to play a phonograph with a peanut <laughs> possibly one of the greatest <laughs> if you know what i'm talking about that was one funny. of the best eddie murphy bits of all time what is he doing what's that you putting on your bread <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, what were the two names, Skippy and Jeff? Jeff. <laughs> so, did you say specifically inventions, or can you can you repeat the question? I I also said uses, but like it would be a novel use, so something that I mean, you could argue that's an invention. So, like something no one had thought of or done with it before, like playing a phonograph. <laughs> Yes. Uh, my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this because I have genuinely no idea. I just I know it's no a lot. Either. You gotta, you gotta play the meta game, y'all. Think about why I would have said fifty. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm playing the game. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. All right, let's start with Neil. I I know I did a I did actually did a question about Carver recently. I'm not sure if that's even one. It may be one that I wrote, but we haven't gotten to because I actually started working on a Black History episode once too, hmm. and then it got to be like March, and I thought, oh, maybe I'll just do that <laughs> next year. <laughs> Missed the window, <laughs> <laughs> but I know he had. I mean, he had hundreds of recipes, so that's kind of what I was getting at. Mm-hmm. But um, I just kind of guessed 250. Okay. <laughs> and Kels? I got the same thing. Really? But, okay. but not nearly as much of the science <laughs> to go with. <laughs> I knew it had to be a, a lot, so I was like, it's probably somewhere between 100, 300-ish. So I just throw out 250. And Andy? This is genuinely creepy because I was <laughs> writing down 200. And then you said, 
think about play the meta game. Think about what I said about fifty. So I went with two hundred and fifty since I hadn't written the last two digits. Oh, so I Davo. have two fifty. Are you on the same train? I'm not. Oh, can we all no. guess what Davo put? Yeah, put, what did I put? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Twelve thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Four seventy-five. Uh, <laughs> lower. Uh, I went with the uh, the Loch Ness monster's favorite number, tree fifty. All right. Well, <laughs> why is that? Oh, come on, Andy. Loch Ness monster's favorite number. I need about is... tree fifty. <laughs> come on. You know what that Loch Ness monster said to me? <laughs> I'm gonna need about tree fifty. <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are doing now. South Park. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. oh. Okay. So actually, in one way or another, everybody got points because the answer is 300. Yay! Oh. Wow. Mm-hmm. This is Sparta. That's crazy. See, when I play, I metagame the metagame, and then I think my way into oblivion, and I would have written down like 10,000. <laughs> The meta of the meta. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number four in science. Who was the first African American woman in space? Oh, she, dude! I know who this is, and I know for the worst reason. <laughs> I'm so scared. The of worst what that means. <laughs> Yeah, it's a. Re- I'm gonna get a lot of guff from y'all when I tell you why I know this person, but I don't know her name. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to write I, I mean, where, how could, I know her from. One could argue that that means you don't really know. I mm. do. I do. It's confusing. I do. Okay. I'm locked in with something that's approximate. Okay. I'm locked in. Andy, you locked in? Um, I'm locked in. Yeah. All yeah. right. Kels, you locked in first. I believe it's Mae Jemison. And Neil. So I I know her first name is May, M A E. I put Jameson. Okay. And uh Davo. She not only went to space, she was a transporter officer on the USS Enterprise. <laughs> so wow. that's all I know her from. <laughs> <laughs> wow I don't know her name but she was a damn fine transporter officer <laughs> and I, Andy are you serious right now? I don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> she guessed she appeared on an episode of Star Trek I think it was Voyager really? yeah really? and they made a big she had, uh, she had lines and everything and she was a special guest star on the show because she liked Star Trek when she was younger and she was an astronaut so they put her on, she got to do a guest spot on the show. And I just didn't know her name or anything pertinent to the actual question. <laughs> this is confirmed. I just looked this up because it sounded like hooey, but it is 100% real. <laughs> See? Can I get five points for no hooey? No. You oh, five points? are awarded That's a bit no m- points. That's oh, a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, what did you write down? Well, is it Corinne Dufour from Moonraker? Technically, she would be before them. Oh, probably um, not. Because <laughs> Moonraker <laughs> came out in what, 79? See, I knew the actual person. Did you? Uh huh. I did. You uh-huh. just did the equivalent of you drew a state figure. It was like, she looked just like this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's a little Star Trek logo on my stick figure. See? <laughs> this is her. <laughs> so, Kells got this answer correct. Neil, you were super close. I, I feel like Neil rules are, if Kells hadn't got it exactly right, you would be awarded points. But do you, well, what do we think? Does Neil get points for the one letter change? I would say so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll take there it. we go. Plus, she looks just like that lady that Davo drew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do know what she looks like. 
Me too. Mm. She was wearing <laughs> a yellow Starfleet uniform. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so end of round one. At the end of round one, our scores are Devo and Andy tied with 20, Kells 30, and Neil has 40. All right. So maybe this will help us out. Don't usually do this, but I backed science with some sports. Sports ball. All right. Okay. So question one. John Baxter Taylor Jr. is the first African-American to win a gold medal. In what year did he accomplish this? And you get a bonus point if you can tell me where. Oh, boy. I am going to... I mean, by where, I'm assuming you don't just mean like in the Olympics, right? Ah, that is correct. I would like the city. I have no idea. Never heard of them. So I'm just going to start drawing some stick figures. (laughs) (laughs) So we just need to know where he was when he won it? The year? And then for a bone... The, for a bonus, you can tell me the city. I'm mm, locked in. Okay. I'm locked in. Oh, no. I'm locked in. Man. I'm locked in. Okay, let's start with Andy. Um, I know this because uh, on a 1925 radio show, Buck Rogers... Uh, He played Transporter Boy. It was um, a big deal. You're the Um, worst. At least mine was real. (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea. I I, I said uh, 1925 Paris. It it was a train. 25? 1925? (laughs) Okay. No idea. Never heard of them. Sorry. I mean, mm. you, could, you could at least go with an even number year for the Olympics. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, Too I'm, late. and I'm the idiot for knowing Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> and Davo? I said 1904, and I believe that was St. Louis. Hmm. Kells? Oddly enough, I also said 1904, St. Louis. And Neil? I went a little bit later, 1912, in Stockholm. So, the answer, it's kind of a bummer, actually, because y'all were all very close. 1908 in... London. London. Yep. Very close, but no points there. Dang it. All right, fellas. Question two in sports. I actually think this is particularly hard, but then you guys surprise me all the time. (laughs) Which MLB team had the first, and this is important, openly black player in 1885? Hint, this team no longer exists. Locked in. (laughs) No longer exists. Now, you know what I mean like they just moved and became something else. You I was mean, just like about to say that. Folded. This name definitely doesn't exist anymore. How about that? That's the extent to what I know. It could, I guess, it could have moved, changed names. You guys think I'll do a little research? <laughs> I don't know why I know this right away, but I, I can remember. Uh, something's what year was this? 1885. It must be in, must be in Ken oh, Burns. Cool. Of course it's in Ken Burns baseball. Yeah. I was trying to think back to when I watched that last. <laughs> I've watched all those, I think, three times through. Yeah. I can tell you when I watched it last. You've never watched it, Neil. <laughs> Neil hates Ken Burns. No, I don't have a problem with Ken Burns. I hate baseball. Oh, <laughs> Do it. You gotta watch the extra I'll... innings section of that documentary. It's the best part. It's the Boston <laughs> part. Mm. It's just tacked on. I've I've actually watched his uh, National Parks series a couple times. <clears throat> oh, I need to watch that. I haven't watched that. Okay. 
This for sure doesn't exist anymore. No, I can confirm. If I'm remembering this right, it definitely does not exist anymore. All right, I'm going to go I'm with what, I'm going to go with this. I'm locked in. I locked in, by the way. Is that everybody? Yes. Okay, let's start with Andy and his confidence. The Toledo Blue Stockings. What the world? I sound like he <laughs> just made that up. I'm sure. And Davo? I said the St. Louis Browns. Okay. And Kells? I said the Providence Grays. And Neil? Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. <laughs> There's a high, twisting, yeah. hang time spiral. Yes. <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. So that is so good. <laughs> I, I punted if that's not clear. Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Yeah. I like this well, clips thing. Yeah, it's awesome. Andy, you are correct with your fictitious name. <laughs> it is the Toledo Blue Stockings. Now, the reason I said um, openly black players is because. At that time, there were other teams with black players, but a lot of them were um, mixed race or um, very light skin. And so they, I guess, quote unquote, passed for white players. But um, this Toledo uh, Blue Stockings player, everyone very much knew that he was African-American. So this is a real player on a completely fictitious made up team that Andy just created right now. Uh huh. Yep. Nice. That's the way it it's goes. It's funny how that yep. works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I've always been a big fan of the Toledo Blue Stockings. <laughs> you only need one color socks I mean... in the MLB. <laughs> oh. I, by the way, quick Ooh. aside uh, from my birthday, one of the girls got me, actually, shout out to Yana, a, uh, a bound volume that's embossed with my name on it of all the main Chicago Cubs stories that ever appeared in uh, the New York Times. Oh, wow. Starting all the way back to the turn of the century. And it's just been, actually comes with a magnifying glass. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Which like, yeah, I'm turning 50. Now I'm getting books with magnifying glasses. That's great. Um, But (laughs) it's, it's been an amazing book. It's fascinating to me how sports writing has, has changed. You know, the Cubs had their, Star player for a long, long, long time, Chance, who was also their team captain. Uh, and, and that's when they went to the World Series in 1906 and 07. I didn't know he was going to be the team captain. He went from the Cubs, not making this up, to the Red Sox. Oh. Retired oh. and tried to make a comeback with the White Sox uh, oh and my. died. And what was fascinating to me is in the sports story, it talks about Chance becoming ill, then Chance feeling like he was getting better, but then illness took his life. And I'm like, illness? Um, do we anything more definitive? <laughs> but that's how they refer to it as. He died of illness. The humors are misaligned. Yeah, exactly. So remember all our listeners out there, for all you granddads from the greater Chicagoland area, it comes <laughs> with a magnifying glass. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my world. All right, question three in sports. In 1950, the NBA had its first three black players. For 10 points, name any of the three. Two bonus points for each additional player that you can name. (sighs) 1950. I'm locked in. Hey, Kells, what's your answer? Um, on my paper. Uh, <laughs> on my paper, what? Locking. What's his last name? <laughs> I am locking in. I am playing the odds. On my paper, Idget. I'm locked in. Nah, I'm just going to write this. Now. No, yes. Oh, what a Nimrod. No. No. All right. Uh,. Neil, uh, cue up Ray Guy for me. 
Ray Guy on the NBA question? Really? I know. I feel terrible. No, wait, wait. Don't queue up Ray Guy for me. No. I'm going to at least put something down out of pride. <laughs> I'm locked in. So let's start with Davo. Bill Russell. And Neil. Ray Guy. Ooh. <laughs> Two sports star. Mm-hmm. And Kells? I know I'll be really interested to hear the other two, but I know Earl Lloyd because he played for the Syracuse Nationals. And um, Andy? I'm playing the odds. I went with John Smith. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Andy. Well, Kells is the only one that got points there. The other two are Nat Clifton and Chuck Cooper. Uh, and one of those yeah. has like sweet feet in the middle of his name as a nickname, but I can't remember. I think it was Nat Clifton. That would be a kick butt. Nickname. That's a great nickname. Mm-hmm. We, we're lacking sweet nicknames in sports right can I, now. Can that be my nickname? No. I call dibs. Can I be no. sweet feet? <laughs> no. <laughs> How about quick legs? Any <laughs> quick legs. I'm okay with I that. like it. Quick legs. <laughs> Well, it sticks now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, question four in sports. Willie O'Ree was the first black player in the NHL. On what team did he play? And there is an easy mode for this question if you want it. Easy mode. Easy mode. Easy mode. I'll take easy mode as well. I am so happy that you all want the easy mode. <laughs> Davo once forgot this team existed. <laughs> That's a terrible easy mode. There's a hockey team called Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay. Davo forgot this team existed. On the show. On the show. Huh. I don't. I don't know if there might be more teams he's forgotten <laughs> I mean, outside Davis, of the show. Davos forgotten so many things on the show. It's hard to <laughs> pin it down. I mean, just earlier. I'm just gonna let it all wash over me, like like a duck, like a duck. Okay, I have a. I have an answer. I have an actual answer this time because I could name an NBA team or an NHL team. Yay! Woot! And I think it's even an old team. All right. I don't I am gonna go with this one. It's... I was gonna put down the Bruins, but he oh. <laughs> I almost outsmarted myself. I'm locked in. With the Boston Bruins, is that your answer? Is that everybody? I'm locked I'm in. Locked so. in. Yeah. Well then we gotta start with Andy. Yep. This is I I, I think I'm remembering this right. Um because my first instinct was Boston Bruins. I don't know why. I know. I, I can tell sure. you. I can tell you why. I went to easy mode, and uh, you said Dave forgot this team existed. And I went, well, it can't be Boston. But I think in the Jersey episode, where some, we had a question about jerseys, is that right? I think he forgot about the Boston Bruins. So I went back with Boston Bruins. Well, you're on the right track, Andy, but you're not remembering the right situation. Okay. Let's go to uh, Neil next. I think the Rangers are an old team, so that's my guess. They are. And Kells? I went with the Bruins because I thought it would be ironic that Davo, being such a big Red Sox fan, would forget about the Boston Bruins. And so Davo. It's the Boston Bruins because I did a question in my Bears episode about professional sports teams. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> Named after Bears, and I completely forgot <laughs> the Boston Bruins. Yep. Oh, it is, in fact, the Boston Bruins. I remember that now, but that was two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was a scintillating sports round. I'm, I was kind of banking on that to pull me out of last place. <laughs> um, can't I don't even float, know. I guess. I'm not keeping up with the scores at all. Well, That's I'm in last one of my place. Worst sports categories ever. Last place. 
I know Major said I went a little too rough on the sports questions. I'm sorry. No, we need the sports questions to be a little harder, honestly. We don't need that to be like the category we're always running to to get points, you know? Well, because Mage was like, you know there's like a lot of um, black athletes in modern day, right? And I was like, yeah, but technically my – I was like, technically the whole theme is like black history, so – no, you think they got to be older. No, that was really good. Those were those were four good questions. It's just yeah, there's nothing wrong with those questions at all. And I probably would have scored just as well on uh, modern day sports. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of round two, Davo has twenty five, Andy thirty five, Neil forty, and Kells forty five. Category three. Would it would make sense that I called this movies, but it's not totally all movie based. So it category three is called Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> Question one: Hattie McDaniel's played the controversial role of Mammy in what movie? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. All right, Neil. Gone with the wind. Kells. Gone with the wind. Davo. Gone with the wind. And Andy. Gone with the wind. So the teacher in me um, puts you guys like in a seated order in front of me. And to my (laughs) right is Neil. And then (laughs) next to him is Kells. And then Davo. And then Andy's on the far left. So that's how I see y'all right now. (laughs) (laughs) Just so I'm clear, is there a pile of papers on the floor? Oh, there's many piles of papers on the floor. And someone has eaten a candy bar and then rubbed it into the ground. And I have neither noticed nor do I care. (laughs) Are you sure it's a candy bar? Nope, oh, we bar. aren't. <laughs> All joking we are aside, one of, the, one of the things I love about the way she runs her classroom, this genuinely works great, but you know how normally teachers spend time handing papers back or maybe they have folders up at the front desk where you check your folder for your papers. If you walk into waste, Allison's room, waste there's of time. her desk, and there's a pile of papers on the floor, and the students, when they come in, have to find their paper on the floor <laughs> next to a desk. <laughs> It teaches them the real world, Andy. It does. <laughs> That's fantastic. Wow. All right. Question two is a thinker. There are five black EGOT recipients. Oh, good Lord. Oh, name, name them for two points apiece. Five. Oh, come on. Dang it, Andy. I thought this was a really good question. I no, was it's joking. really, really good. No, it's, it's good. What's going to get me is the Tony. That's the one that's going to screw me up. Yep. Can I just say that when I read the list, there is nobody on there that you're going to be like, really? Every name you're going to be like, yep. Do they have two EGOTs? <laughs> I know one for sure. Me too. I got two. I have two for sure. What? Yeah, the the one that I'm thinking just well, I'm not gonna say. Please say. I was thinking about giving that hint, Neil, but. Oh, I'm trying to think of Oscar winners. There are five. There are five. There was four. Until recently. That sorry, Neil. I went ahead and said it anyway. That's okay. <laughs> I got two. Oh come on! Two. I could not imagine. Who am I missing? Are you sure there's not just five that aren't that aren't white? <laughs> I I am sure. Because I could think of a few a few Hispanics. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I had Rita Moreno yeah. halfway written down. It's like oh. Uh, I I'm think. Going to... Um. No, I don't even think this list includes necessarily honorary. Um, well, I'm going to lock in with my one that I know, and I want, I'm want. i very curious about the list. 
is holy three. Mother- what? Come on, man. I don't want to get moved to the left side of the room. <laughs> I'm not sure about <laughs> all of them. I'm sure about two of them. The third one just seemed like a pretty good guess. I'm locked in. I am. Um, all right. I. Wait, 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 wait. I wait. have a guess for a third one. Wait. Can I? No, I locked in. Shoot. <laughs> now I'm locked in. Now yeah, I'm, I'm officially locked in. I'm done. I'm locked in the with four. Two that I guess. know and two that are guesses, and I have no idea on the fifth one. Okay. Let's start with Davo. Just give me my two points for John Legend. All right, Andy. Uh, John Legend, Whoopi Goldberg, and I think maybe, I'm guessing here, but James Earl Jones. And Kells? Okay, uh, I believe Whoopi was first. I also have John Legend, and I ran out of steam, but I guessed Quincy Jones. Ooh. And Neil? So if you kind of combine Andy and Kells, then you've got my list. I know for sure Whoopi and John Legend. I guessed James Earl Jones, and I guessed Quincy Jones for the musics. Mm. And the only one that Neil is miss- missing is Harry Belafonte. I was thinking oh. Harry Belafonte. Oh. Man. Yeah. <sighs> so for two points apiece, I'll let Neil do that math. <laughs> I got So I got six. Yeah, I, I believe that's six. six for Kells and Andy, four for Davo, and eight for me. I only got one right, man. Yeah, I only got oh. two. <laughs> I'll be oh, moving my. Whoopi? No, I didn't. I totally forgot about Whoopi because I didn't think she wanted Tony. It's a nice layout, though. Devo. Thanks. You're right. The Tonys, the Tonys are uh, the hard ones. Yeah. Do you, um, Devo, yeah. do you watch 30 Rock or have you ever watched 30 Rock? I have. Love the EGOC show. Uh, yes. And the person that Tracy uh, references is Whoopi. Oh. He wants to be like Whoopi. <sighs> When he's going for his EGOT. Damn it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay, question three um, was written by my husband. So it might seem a little different than the other questions. (laughs) (laughs) How many characters did Eddie Murphy play in Coming to America? (laughs) Uh (laughs) Oh, give me a minute. This Eddie Murphy that, by himself, uh, right? Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is a movie that Kells introduced me to, and I have now seen it three times. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say this because I've seen that movie once. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I know. Uh, but I've seen Princess Bride over twenty times. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm still thinking. Uh, I've I'm, come I'm up just with three. making sure I'm not forgetting anybody. Because he and Arsenio Hall were very busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I think this is all of them. I'm like, is that is that everybody? I'm still. Yeah, I'm locked in. Okay, let's start with Kells. Okay, of course, there was Prince of King, Clarence, the the barber, uh, the Jewish gentleman who was in the barbershop all the time, and Jackson Heights' own Mr. Randy Watson, so four. Oh! (laughs) And Davo. I got four! And Andy. I have four as well. And Neil. I guessed four. And the answer is four. Yes. Yes. Very nice. Thank you, Major, for that question. Thank you, Major. (laughs) Awesome question. (laughs) I want to see the movie of just the barbershop. Yeah, that that, that should have happened a long time ago. That movie should have been made. Okay, question four. According to Netflix... 
who has the number one stream stand-up special on their service? Bonus, who has, for one point bonus, who has the number two streamed stand-up special? Mm, that's a really good question. I'm locked in. I'm locked in as well. Yeah, I'm locked in. Oh, God, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. I've, I've seen it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know it. I'm just... Allison, is the person in first and second place, are they the same person? Is this possible? <laughs> no. Okay. I, 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 was... I think I know what you mean, though. <laughs> oh, I got it. So I think it is. I've watched it a lot. So I, I'm locked in. Okay, let's start with Neil then. I hope it's Dave Chappelle. Did you take a crack at the bonus? I did not. Okay, and Andy? Oh, I went with Trevor Noah's uh, Afraid of the Dark. But Chappelle's mm. a good guess. Bonus or no? Afraid of the Dark is the name of the show, the special. Oh, the second. I'm sorry. Second place, yeah. Uh, I, Dave Chappelle then. Okay. <laughs> and Davo? Uh, I went with Dave Chappelle and the bonus I said Chris Rock. And uh Kells. Uh Dave Chappelle and I guess Kevin Hart for who was in second place. Well, Kells got the uh the question correct and the bonus correct. Duh. Nice. Just because I have to know, Kels, what did you mean with your question? I thought that like maybe Dave Chappelle also had the second most oh, um, streamed would, comedy special. Yeah, because he's that would be he's amazing. got. I think he did three or four of them specifically for Netflix, right? I think it's at um, least three, five now. Is it? Yeah, I think in, five. In my heart, I thought you meant that. It was uh, Kevin Hart and Cat Williams because like... <laughs> that would be that would be something. <laughs> yep, because I was like, yeah, you're right. Kevin Hart is just kind of like this, you know, trying mm -hmm. to be Cat Williams. So <laughs> I mean, we love Kevin Hart. No shame. I uh... whoopsie. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> at the end of round three. The scores are Davo has 57, Andy 61, Neil 78, and Kells 83. Okay, category four is literature. Literature. Question one. Is that like books? Oh boy. I I think so. <laughs> it's kind of a big word for me. Are there pictures in the books? In panel form with superheroes. <laughs> You're never going to win that one day, bro. Yeah, yeah, bless your heart. Yeah. Question one. Solomon Northup is the autobiographical author of what brutal story that was turned into a modern day film? Locked in. Locked, locked in. in. I'm locked in. Okay, let's start with Andy. Seven years a slave. <laughs> Can we give him seven twelfths of a point for that? What did I do wrong? Everything. Okay. How, how about Kells? Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> this is, and is twelve years a slave. Oh, Not seven. It what wasn't a five-year um. <laughs> Laying off in that period. <laughs> it was all 12. Oh. Technically, it's like having one letter off. That's yeah, 12 years of slave. Is it? There's no. a whole five more enslaved years. <laughs> I, I, I'm not playing that down, mind you. I'm just <laughs> saying. Uh, and Neil? 12 years of slave. And Davo? 12 years of slave. Yes, it is 12 <laughs> yes, of years course. a slave. <laughs> yep. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, Andy. It's okay, bud. I'm so sorry. Do I get any points? 
If if everybody else hadn't gotten it so right, yep. maybe like one or two. Oh, crap. I'm so glad I made you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have proud. I think I like like if like if it had been like Devo or Neil or even Kels, I think I would have snickered when they answered. Like, no, it's seven. I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the first to admit. Even when you guys started laughing, I'm like, "No, that's what, what it is." I, I <laughs> hand to God, the book is behind me on my bookcase. And, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, that makes you, sh- you shouldn't have said that. <sighs> Question two in literature: What writer, amongst other titles, was born Marguerite Annie Johnson? In St. Louis, Missouri, in 1928. Um, oh, crap. All right. I'll take the easy mode. Me too. Uh, the easy mode? Yes. Oh, please. you want me to come up with one real quick? <laughs> no, that was, that was a no. joke. <laughs> wait, 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 what year? Did you, did you, you said? She was born 1928. Mm-hmm. In St. Louis, you said? Yep. Oh, locked in. And you're looking for another name for her? Her pen like her name. Pen name? Mm-hmm. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. That'd be really great if you just yeah. restated the name that I said in the question. Like, <laughs> yep. That was That's still her. her name. That's still her. Yep. Prove me wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm locked in. I want to see the okay. birth certificate. Let's start with Andy. Maya Angelou. Nice. Okay. Devo? Maya Angelou. Kells? Maya Angelou. The St. And... Louis threw me off, though. Hmm. And um, Neil? I'm not really proud of the fact that just about the only black female writer I could think of is Maya Angelou. Yeah, but you got it took you to the right answer because it is Maya Angelou. Um. Kells, why did you say St. Louis threw you off? Because I always think of her as being from Stamps, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Yep. She can be born I in the had, place. I had tickets to see her speak here in Fayetteville, and she got sick, and she wrote this most beautiful apology letter to all the people who had tickets. Um, you know, obviously not mm-hmm. individual letters, but this apology letter and assured us that, that you know she would be coming back soon and she passed away a few weeks later Aww. i've always been so i mean obviously I, I, i'm sad that we lost such a great voice but at the same time like i came this close to getting an opportunity to actually hear her read several poetry and uh i missed <laughs> an amazing opportunity missed okay question three what is the name for the 1920 literary movement that was an early manifestation of black consciousness. Uh, Locked in. I know this in the same way I knew about this you transporter officer. <laughs> May Jemison. There you go. May Jemison. David, there's no way this was on Star Trek. If it was, hey, then I maybe LeVar that. Burton talked about it. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little, uh, I'm putting down answer, but I, okay, I'm locked in. Uh, cue up the, uh, cue up the punt for me there, ne- there Neil. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start with Kells. I believe you're referring to the Harlem Renaissance. Oh my God! I wrote Har- Harlem. <laughs> oh, man, Ray, <laughs> Davo. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Kick <laughs> is away. There's a high twisting hang time spiral. <laughs> hang time I love spiral. it. That's I the love best. It so much. That is so good. That is the best. Andy. I too wrote down the Harlem Renaissance, but I was troubled that you referred to it as just a literary movement because it also included 
uh, um, oh my jazz. God. Stuff. No, uh, it did. It, it, music and 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 sculpture. Yes, and but Andy, what category are we in right now? Literature, mm-hmm. right? So it's the Harlem Renaissance. I'm sorry, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got the answer right, and you wanted it more writer. Come on, he <laughs> did, Neil. Well, honestly, my answer was going to be basically the same as Andy's. I I thought it expanded. The question made it sound like it was exclusively oh, a literature, a literary. <laughs> oh my god! But anyway, my answer is Harlem Renaissance, regardless of my logic for getting there. Mm-hmm. Y'all make me sick. I struggled real hard to get Harlem written on a piece of paper. And you're like, you know, this is the question. You know, I am right. I get full credit. But your question, <laughs> I would have been writer if you had just expanded your question. Oh. To be no, fair, guys- I mean, and this is this is why I'm questioning the question, is that I did not write down Harlem Renaissance at first. I was trying to think if there was a literature movement within the Harlem Renaissance that I had missed. So you meta the meta. <sighs> well, here's my thought process. We're just misunderstood, so wanted- Andy. Yeah, I just wanted to fit it in the literary category, so I called it a literary movement, but what... It's not even like when you look on the website, it's not, it doesn't talk about like everything. It does talk about everything it encompasses, but like it just calls itself the early manifestation of black consciousness, whether that was in music or yeah. yeah. So that's why I know it's a little rough, but everybody did great, but Davo. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to go sit in the back of the room next to the pencil sharpener and throw paper at the. Next to that candy nerds? bar. Next, it's my candy bar. <laughs> we hope it's a chocolate bar. Actually, we're oh, not. Okay. <laughs> okay, question four. Who wrote? There's a series of um, uh, books that I'm about to read. Okay. Who wrote "Beloved," "The Bluest Eye," Locked and in. "Song of Solomon"? Locked in. Yeah, locked in. Uh, <laughs> two of these books on my bookshelf behind me right now. Right next to Seven Years of Life? No. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's got the greenest eye. <laughs> kind of loved. <laughs> Friend zoned. Yep. <laughs> Harlem Renaissance. And the song of... And the song of Sal. What the heck? I think. Do I know this? I think do you do. I, do I? I probably do. I'm I just sure want to. I just want to thank you for reminding me that I do know at least one other female black writer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm locked in with the only other female black writer I know. Ooh, this should be interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start with Davo. Oh, I, what about my contract? <laughs> Man. Please say Rihanna. Uh, I, Please say Rihanna. <laughs> oh, I said Toni Morrison. And Kells? Toni Morrison. Yes! And Andy? <laughs> Andy? Oh, we, we lost him. <laughs> Well, I just I just lost the name of the basketball announcer that you just did. Marv Albert. Marv Albert. Mar- <laughs> was a Marv Albert, yes. <laughs> Tony Morrison. And Neil. I also said Tony Morrison. Great job, especially to Davo. Uh, hey. Proud of you. Yes, it is Tony Morrison. She is both a Nobel and Pulitzer Prize winner. But has she ever been in a comic book? Right. Uh, maybe or on probably voyager. <laughs> this is, this is a good or chance. on voyager oh probably <laughs> all right end of round four at the end of round four scores are devo 87 andy 91 neil 118 and kells 123 hmm. it's anybody's game except probably david's boy come on holding down third place <laughs> <laughs> well 
The next category seems like cheating, but it is history within the major theme of black history. Okay. So that's okay. a dive. <laughs> okay. Question one. What Supreme Court decision upheld the constitutionality of separate but equal? Lockdown. Lockdown. Uh, that was... You said upheld. Uh-huh. I did. Okay. Yeah. I'm locked in. It's the other one. Devo, did you lock in? No, oh, heck no. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Was that a heck nor? Yeah, heck nor, saying. man. I didn't. Oh, I didn't lock in there. I have not locked in on this question. Oh, no, sir. Uh, <laughs> I feel like. Could I'm, you read it? Yeah, I was gonna. One ask. more time, please. What Supreme Court decision upheld the constitutionality of separate but equal? I am. Yeah. You're thinking of one, but it's probably the other one, Dave. Yeah, I'm just gonna write the one I know mm. off the top of my head. Mm. And Allison, do if you one. go to me first, uh, come on now. Don't do if you go one. to me first, Allison, <laughs> oh man, ignore, <laughs> ignore. <laughs> All right, Dave, uh, let's start with Neil. I hope that it is Plessy versus Ferguson. And Andy, Plessy v. Ferguson. Kells. It is, well, I'm not going to say that. I don't know what else is going to be in this category, but Plessy versus Ferguson. And Davo. The other one. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. That one proved the opposite, Davo. I know. <laughs> All right. I All know. Right. I debated, that's not a question later, so uh, that's why I was like, maybe I'll trick him up, make him write Brown versus Ford. But uh, well, that's I what I wrote. Also... So you did trick him up. So <laughs> trick him up. I told you, you not that him. one day, both. <laughs> I know you did. I did think about writing uh, the case of Dred Scott, but I went with the Plessy v. Ferguson. Andy so can tell can a little trivia nugget that mm -hmm. I love about this case. We spent an entire day with this case uh, in in my history class. Uh, Homer Plessy. Was you, you were talking earlier about the baseball player that could pass, as you said. Um, Homer Plessy had one African-American grandparent. The rest of his family was white. And he mm. looked white. And um, he was a very early civil rights activist. He purposefully uh, bought a ticket and making it clear at the ticket office and everything that he had one black grandparent which under the law still meant meant he had to be segregated even though he looked white the one drop rule yeah, yeah the one drop rule exactly which is just mm -hmm. so horrific <laughs> and mm -hmm. he um he purposely bought a ticket on this train and made it clear to the conductor and everybody that he was sitting in the white section and they stopped the train and arrested him and it eventually went to the supreme court of course and he lost uh, but it's kind of forgotten that he was actually a civil rights activist that was uh, showing the absurdity of segregation. Hmm. I didn't know that, Andy. No, I did not. In a quick little aside, tasty nugget. that was a delicious <laughs> nugget. I like that nugget. In a quick aside, Allison, the two cases you mentioned about maybe writing questions for were the ones I thought of. So thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. All right, question two in history. Who was the first black woman millionaire in America thanks to her homemade line of hair care products? Locked in. I know who this is again. And she wasn't on Star Trek. Hey. <laughs> Maybe Stargate. I don't know what happens on that show. So. <laughs> Neither do I. I do. I rewatched all of them the other day. I think she was actually on Battlestar Galactica. Oh. There it is. <laughs> Or sliders somewhere that I don't know. <laughs> I'm locked in. Uh, I am locked in. I all right. I'm locking in. Okay, let's start with Andy. 
You know, I'm sure it was somebody long before her. I hope it was. Uh, but I went with Tina Turner because <laughs> the second part of the show. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and Kells. Madam C.J. Walker. And oh, right. uh, Neil. Madam C.J. Walker. And Dave Cosmetics. Madam yep. CJ Walker. Yeah. Which was also part of the question, Andy, but. <laughs> no, yes. well, I know it was part. I, I, I just didn't have a clue. But now, as yeah. soon as you said the name, like, right, yeah, she made cosmetics. Mm -hmm. Yep. Madam CJ Walker is the answer. Question three. I am ashamed to say that I did not know this next one. I feel like. You either know it or you don't, and hopefully all of you do. But um, if you don't, no shame, because I didn't either. Or maybe a little shame. Uh, <laughs> number three, what is Malcolm X's birth name? Locked in. I have seen that movie a ridiculous amount of times. I have his book. On your shelf behind you? No, it's in another room, but I have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I think I got it. I. Well, uh, you guys are too smart. It's Dave, would you like a hint? Yes. It's not Jamal Warner. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that hint. Uh, Just so that you want to uh, think about it. You know. Right. Uh, I'm locked in. Okay, let's start with Neil. Yeah, before I read this book, probably in my twenties, I had never really thought about uh, uh, the black experience at all, and uh, it really opened my eyes to to a lot of stuff. And I think, if I remember right, his last name was Little. And Kells? Neil is correct. Malcolm Little. Davo? The other one. <laughs> <laughs> Big? His last name was Big? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Andy? Malcolm Little. His name was Malcolm Little. All right. Question four. Oh. Hold on. It says refer to, so I gotta go. <laughs> you okay. left yourself notes. I did. <laughs> See, you know, on a computer, you could just like right. edit stuff and <laughs> paste it into place. I mean, even on paper, there are erasers and stuff. You kiddos and your fangled technology. And... <laughs> All right, question four Which U.S. state? had the United States first black senator in 1870. Locked in. Can we not have American <laughs> history questions on this show for a week? Just <laughs> one week. I'm locked in. Uh, I think I, I I'm just going to put a state down um, on yeah, paper. Uh, no, that's a stupid state. It wasn't a state I then. <laughs> I <knew that> <laughs> wrong <laughs> state. <laughs> Could be a state of confusion, David? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Um, I'm locked in. I'm locked in with an answer. All right, me. Oh, I think I know what it is. I'm not positive. I know that uh, it's. it seems somewhat ironic that it was definitely in the Deep South. And I was kind of torn between Alabama and Mississippi and ended up with Mississippi. And Andy? It's Hiram Revels of uh, Mississippi. It's a reflection of the, the radical reconstruction of that period. Mm -hmm. Kells? Yeah. <sighs> I said Louisiana. I know it was in the South, and I, I, I couldn't remember. And Davo? I just want to point out that Andy was shooting for extra credit and should be docked mm -hmm. points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we need a brown noser rule on this show. 
Because <laughs> it makes those of us who don't get these questions right feel real bad. Yeah, like when you and Kells will talk for 20 minutes about one of the NBA questions, and I'm sitting over here playing, you know, Mind Quest. Mind Quest? <laughs> what do you mean? What is Mind Quest? <laughs> no, Mind Quest. What's that called? Minecraft? Yeah, that one. Sure. Can you get your magnifying glass out to read the <laughs> URL there, bud? <laughs> I said Missouri. Missouri. All right. Well, the so correct Missouri. answer is Mississippi. And Andy was correct in his attempt at the bonus that didn't exist. <laughs> it is Hiram Ro- Revels. Hiram Rhodes Revels. All righty. I think. Is that the end of round History five? Is, I believe it is. Yes. At the end of round five, Davo has 97. Andy, 121. Kells, 153. <laughs> and Neil, 158. Oh, a turn. <sighs> okay. Category six, our last um, round of normal play. Is music. Yes. Come on, man. <laughs> trail Cinderella story. Question one in music. Who holds the title for world's fastest rapper with the ability to say 11.2 syllables per second? Locked in. Locked in. <sighs> I got a feeling I know what Andy wrote. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, my answer is not a black guy, so I don't think that's right. <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Ray Guy funny. doesn't rap. Yeah, well, I'm pretty that. sure we've had this question before. Mm, it just uh, came up. Because I know we talked about it, and I was corrected. Yeah, because yeah, I said... And I checked out the, the, the music of this artist. Mm-hmm. I'm locked so in. I know the right answer. Uh, okay, I'm locked in. All right, Kells? Uh, it would be Chicago's own Twister. And Andy? You all thought I was going to say Tech Nine, but <laughs> it is, in fact, from a conversation we had earlier, Twister. And Neil? I think it's Seattle's own Sir Mix a Lot. <laughs> And Davo? I think it's Biz Marquis. You! Uh, The correct answer is Twista. If you haven't given him a listen, go do it. I mean, it is insanity to hear someone say that many syllables in a second. I would yeah. like to see him do it because it feels like it's a little studio work. I don't know. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's real. It's not. It's it legit. Not. I, yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. Question two. What song... Oh, by the way, this is coming from the fact that y'all taught me. Um, actually, Barry taught me what a Diamond um, certified <laughs> like album or song album. means. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what song became the fastest song ever to be certified diamond? The fastest song ever to be certified diamond? Mm-hmm. Huh. I'm locking. I have, I have no clue. I, don't think I, do. I, I think I got a good guess. I've got a good guess because this came up. I'm not going to say. I'm locked in with an answer, and I have probably an even more wrong answer in Princeton. Okay, let's start with Davo. The twist. Um, wrong direction. (laughs) Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I'm dying on this show, and you're like, ooh, shame to that one. (laughs) Sexy Lannister. So I think it's I think it's a little bit more recent than the twist. <laughs> I kind of vaguely remember that it was that kind of weird country crossover, Old Town Road. And Andy? Yeah, I'm gonna take my horse to the Old Town Road. Yeah. And right. Kells. 
I have that in parentheses. I went much older. I said Billie Jean. Mm, well, it is, in fact, Old Town Road. See, I thought a diamond... No, I got diamond and gold mixed up. Two million. And 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 this yeah. came up... This, I knew this because of a conversation I was having with a friend of mine who's a record collector that... Um, there was a period where singles sold big and then, then album sales became the thing. And with downloads, suddenly singles are, are bigger than they've ever been before. Um, so in, in other words, I, I think if this song had come out in the 80s or 90s, you would not see it get certified as a single so quickly. There, it's so easy to buy the single now. It's true. All right. The an- did I already say the answer? Uh, yes, you did. Uh, yes. Okay. It wasn't the twist. <laughs> it was not. Yeah, thanks, the Andy. Twist. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I I got I got gold and diamond confused. That was my rat. I got mixed up. Like I have been this entire show. <laughs> <laughs> Question three: Which twenty twenty Grammy winner winner said having his song win for best rap album is like my little cousin wants to play the game. Let's give him an unplugged controller so he can shut up and feel good about it. Wow. Wow. Well, it's definitely not who I was thinking about because he's nice. Um, (laughs) I don't remember. I don't. Yep, yep, locked in. Was this a posthumous this person... award? Nope. Well, no, because he's getting so Fab Five Freddy didn't yeah. get it. <laughs> oh, for crying that's, out loud! That's your last Goodness. one. Yep. Last what? One. You're you're not gonna kill all Fab Five Freddy. Like Look, you Frank I'm Robinson. I'm losing by like forty five points at this point. I'm just it's a it's a blowout game and a hockey game. I'm just checking people into the boards. Because I'm mad. <laughs> I'm locked in. Uh, yeah. I was I was against this. Is Neil also locked in? Um, sure. <laughs> All I'm right. In. Let's start with Neil. Seattle's favorite, Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy? It's such a bizarre quote i can only guess that andre 3000 did a solo album after outcast and did well in 2020 if and andre 3000 had put an album out i would have talked about it every day until right now <laughs> <laughs> every day and davo oh baby you <laughs> <laughs> got what i need is murky. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. Yes. We weren't sure who you were question. getting at there. <laughs> well, I remember this quote because I was shocked he won mm-hmm. best rap album because his album wasn't really a rap album. Mm-hmm. And I believe you're talking about Tyler, the creator. Uh huh. Yep. Oh. That's, that's exactly what he was mad about, too. He, uh, he didn't understand how he could even win rap album. He was like, y'all just put me in this category because I'm black. So, <laughs> yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. Okay. Question four. And last question of regular rounds. Which musical performer, known as Mr. Show Business, starred in seven Broadway shows, 23 films, had dozens of albums, and played in several different TV roles. There is an easy mode if you need it. Can I have a notion? But I'll take easy mode. Can you can you repeat I'm, it again? I'm dying. Mm-hmm. I'm locked in. I Which think. musical performer known as Mr. Show Business starred in seven Broadway shows, twenty three films, released dozens of albums, and was on and played several TV roles. I do not want easy mode because I'm going out on top, baby. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm locked in with this answer that makes sense to me and me alone. Okay, I'm locked in. Does anybody want an easy mode, or are we all good? I don't need it. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, well, for my... Um, I guess I'll give it after you guys give your answers. So let's start with Andy. The Sandman can, baby. Sammy Davis Jr. That was the and... worst Sammy Davis Jr. impression. <laughs> no, that was spot on. Of the world. Listen, uh-huh. Bismarcky, sit back down. <laughs> oh, baby, you. <laughs> and Neil? Was it the Sandman or the Candyman? It was the Candyman. I think it was Sammy Davis Jr. And Kells? Sammy Davis Jr. My God. And Davo? The other oh, James one. James Brown? You oh, want James no. Brown? You went- no, I actually put Ben Vereen, which isn't a terrible answer, okay. but it isn't a right answer. Dang it, you should have <laughs> taken the easy mode, because the easy mode was, at one point in his life, he only had one eye. That's not I think- Ben Vereen. Has not been no, he anymore. Ben Vereen's mm-hmm. no, no, no. Yeah. How about Wolverine? How about <laughs> that? <laughs> okay. Okay, I kind of been I kind of been not paying attention the last couple of questions, but I think if I did it right, the scores are Davo with ninety seven, Andy one fifty one, Neil one seventy eight, and Kells one eighty three. So what you're saying is Neil. That if I get every single question right, and all of you get all the questions wrong, I will win. Pretty, I mean, more or less, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. okay. No pressure. I just, want, I just want to point out, if Kells had one more point than you, uh, he would have twice as many points as you. <laughs> He's one point shy <laughs> of having twice as many points as you. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to correct a, you know, a professional teacher. But I'll point out that you are a history teacher, and Davo's score of ninety-seven doubled would be one. Oh, I, I wrote it down. It looks like ninety-two. Sorry, it's ninety-seven. You're right. You even <laughs> took away points from me. <laughs> I'm in last place by fifty points. You took points from me. Yeah, my bad. You're a jerk. I am. <laughs> All right, let's light this candle, Allison. I'm ready to win. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. In the 2000 census, can I do this? Can I make their 11 points in the last question? What? Or 11, 11 parts? Top 11? Yeah. Top 11? Yeah. No, yeah. I, do, I do that all the time. Okay, you say, cause... here are the 11, name any 10. Oh, cool. Love it. Yeah. Okay. In the 2000 census, the majority of people who identified on the census as African-American live in what 11 states? And you can name 10 for full credit. Oh, uh, wait just one second, Bobble. Yes, it's your friendly podcasting fanatic. Here to shout out my trivia brothers from another mother, the Trivia Rose. When you get a chance, pop on over to the Trivia Rogues and let Billy and the gang educate you on some things, Bubba. Funk on. And do remember to please look both ways before you cross my mind, baby. I am starting to struggle. All right, I got one, two, three, four. Are we naming 10 or 11? I got 10. 10. 10. 10. Mm-hmm. I have 10. I also have 10. I need two more states. Are there 10 states in the United States? Or, or is that where we are? <laughs> yeah. It's been a bad day, y'all. <laughs> uh, I got to pick the weird one. I don't know why I'm even thinking. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if you get them all right, man, you... Come on, that score jumps right up. You need to think of things. I'm going to say that. Okay. All right, fine. I'm locked in. So, do you guys want to do this on the honor system or how we think it? Honor system. Yep, honor system. Yep. 
Okay. Yep. Number, we got it. All right. Number 11 is, well, these aren't necessarily in any particular order. Like, I'm not going up by population, but. Uh, I put mine in order of the Great Migration. Of course you did. We've got New York. Got that was not yeah. the weird one I put in there. <laughs> Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Got it. Nope. Alabama. Nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Nope. Virginia. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. Got it. Nope. Louisiana. Got yep. It. Nope. Maryland. Nope. Got nope. Got nope. nope. North Carolina. Got yep. It. North Kakalaka. Georgia. <laughs> Got yep. It. Florida. Got it. Nope. Don't got, got it. it. And Texas. Got it. Oh. Don't got it. Nope. Wow, did I bomb. I got it. I thought the Great Migration was more important than it really was. So, Andy, what were some, some on your list uh, that you re were really thinking? I, I thought for sure Illinois was a lock. I thought mm. for sure Michigan was a lock. Mm. New Jersey was a lock. Mm -hmm. uh, industrial, you know, part of the, mainly the Rust Belt and, uh, you know, the industrial centers. In California, I was surprised by. So, Neil, how many did you finish up with? I got seven. Okay, which brings me to 248. And Kels? I got eight. I missed out on Illinois and Michigan. That brings Kels to 263 in the lead. And Andy? I got three. 181. And if, just, I just want to say, let me do some quick math. If <laughs> Devo gets, uh, let's see, 17, he is going to win. <laughs> What'd you get, Devo? <laughs> On a list of 11 states, I managed to get 18, baby. <laughs> I uh, I got seven. Uh, I missed out on Tennessee. I put Arkansas because I was kind of scrambling. And I also thought California would have a larger African-American population. So who's our official winner, Neil? Well, the final scores are Devo with 167, Andy 181, Neil 248, and Kells wins with 263. Kells. Nicely Bravo done, Kells. Kells. Somehow you, Kells you. knows more about black history than the rest of us. I mean, <laughs> I didn't see it coming. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Allison, for those wonderful questions. Yeah. I'm glad we got to do this topic. Me too. It, it showed me where I have a gap in my knowledge and what I need to brush up on. Uh, I need to read books without pictures mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> listen to music that isn't Japanese heavy metal. So I've got, uh, I've got some work to do. So from all of us here at the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast, this is Davo with Kells. As Malcolm X once said, if you have no critics, you'll likely have no success. Andy. So long, ladle brainers. Allison. I don't know what to say. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and Neil. As Maya Angelou once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I love that quote. That's a great quote. Signing off. Uh, greetings and salutations to all you good trivia people out there. I know what you're thinking. Hey, I really enjoyed this show. Uh, how can I get a little more? Well, here to help you out. You can look up these good people on Twitter at Little Brain. Or if Facebook's more your deal, you can look them up at Brain Little Productions. Hey, they've even got their own webpage. It's uh, BrainLittleTrivia.com. Uh, now, if you're feeling generous... You can join a Patreon, where if you donate $10 or more, you can even get yourself a fancy show invite. How about that? Until we meet again, this has been 
44, and I'm glad you joined us. Hope I'm out. The preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions, all rights reserved.